In February 1891, advertisements began circulating North America for Ouija, the wonderful talking board. It promised to answer questions about the past, present, and future by providing a link between the known and the unknown. The spiritualism craze was well underway by the late 19th century, and the Ouija board emerged as one of the most famous items associated with the paranormal. Mocked by some and feared by many others, the Ouija board has a fascinating history and is still used and celebrated by its cult following today. Spiritualism had been popular in Europe for years when the trend spread to North America in the mid-19th century. Far from being widely feared, spiritualist practices were regarded as dark parlor games with advocates including President Abraham Lincoln's wife, Mary, who held seances in the White House after their 11-year-old son died from a fever in 1862. In late 19th century North America, the sorrowful ma aftermath of the American Civil War was keenly felt. More widely, life expectancy hovered around 50 years old and childhood mor mortality remained high. The result was a generation who was very desperate to connect with lost loved ones, which made for fertile ground for spiritualism and the opportunity to communicate with the dead to fully take hold. Though the automatic writing form of spiritualism was gaining popularity and publicity in the late 1800s, it was not new. The first mention of Fuji or planchette writing dates back around 1100 AD in historic documents from the Song Dynasty in China. Before the invention of the Ouija board, the use of talking boards was so common that by 1886, the news reported the phenomenon taking over spiritualist camps in Ohio. In 1890, Elijah Bond, a local attorney and entrepreneur in Baltimore, Maryland, decided to capitalize upon the craze. And so he formalized and patented a commercial talking board. The result was a board marked with the entire alphabet, as well as numbers zero through nine and the words yes, no, and goodbye. It also came with a heart-shaped planchette that was used in seances whenever a spirit wanted to write a message on the board. To use a Ouija board, a group of people gather around a table with the board on it, and each person places their fingers on the planchette. It is then possible to ask questions of the spirit with the planchette moving the letters, numbers, or words to formulate a response. The board's design and methods remain nearly the same to this day. Hello there, friends, and welcome to the Paranatural Podcast. My name is Ben. And a raccoon stole my penis. Well, that must be uncomfortable. He's Jake. And tonight, we are going to talk about Hasbro's cardboard and plastic method of summoning demons, the Ouija board. How you doing, Jacob? Oh, I'm doing great. Other than that raccoon thing, I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing splendid. Fucking splendid. splendid. All right. Good. Yeah, how's your it. how's your shoulder feel? Feels like shit. Don't lift logs over your head when you're old. That just old. not I'm old. I'm an old man. Old not a shape. <laughs> I mean round is a shape. <laughs> I was gonna say it. You said it so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Ouija boards. Oh, wait, before we get into that. Son of a dick. Because I believe in journalistic integrity. I said a wrong thing. During the uh, the uh, congressional hearing episode, I said that Project Blue Book ended in 1967. Now, the minute I said it, I was like, I don't think that's right. And I was wrong. It ended on December 17, 1969. So there, there's your correction. I have been waiting like half a week to hear you say that because it's been eating at me since you said 1967 i'm sure but i've corrected it now so we can move yeah. on 
Mm-hmm. Now I can start sleeping again. At night All right. That's good. That's good. With, with the help of my pills. That's good. Journalistic integrity, my friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. I know this is your first time admitting it. I wasn't wrong. I was mistaken. Mm, mistake. Just to see what it feels like. How was it? <laughs> painful i'm not gonna do that again yeah. <laughs> i've actually grown to enjoy the feeling that's why i'm wrong so often <laughs> well you're a masochist i don't play the flute <laughs> i don't think that's what masochist means <laughs> master kiss is that what you said no a lot of people a lot of people like my lips both of them anyway <laughs> Both of them. All both of them. <laughs> Anyways. Your mom don't count. Anyway. <laughs> My mother most certainly does count. <laughs> Thank you. That's like saying my grandma don't count. Sorry, I did not mean to insinuate that your mother was bad at math. Oh, God. Benjamin. <laughs> These dad jokes are hurting. My sperms are killing themselves. <laughs> Um, is that supposed to be a bad thing? <laughs> I guess not. No. All right. But, but just so you know, I'm gonna have a hard time. Uh, you know. What? Anyways, this isn't that kind of show. I'm not gonna get into what it's gonna do to me. <laughs> Save that for the OnlyFans. Anyway, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're we're the only fans. Anyway, (laughs) after this, everyone, go to OnlyFans slash Paranatural Jake. (laughs) See some shit that you're gonna regret seeing. (laughs) Bring a magnifying glass. No, no, I gotta zoom all the way up. Gotta zoom all the way up. You'll be able to see a shape. Gonna need a wide angle lens. So something tells me this ain't going to be the episode that we're going to bleep. What are we even doing here? I don't even know where we, what we're doing here. Oh, it totally fits into Ouija. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's just a random amalgamation of bullshit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything we got to say before we start this other than, you know, all the... I am pretty sure we just said plenty more than we really need. <laughs> yeah, to. I know. I know. Yeah. My OnlyFans subscription is 10 cents a month. Month. A month? 10 cents a month? 10 cents a month. <laughs> Been forgetting letters all day. You should see my notes. Impotent. 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 Speaking of your OnlyFans. <laughs> watch it benjamin it was, the door was wide open but i couldn't i gotta walk in it <laughs> okay are we ready to start this yeah let's uh actually do an episode here pal. <laughs> <laughs> all right you know what give me give me this much time okay mm-hmm. talk about your only fans Mm. It's a paranatural podcast backslash the Wookiee. <laughs> Are you coming on to me in Wookiee talk? <laughs> That's Space Bigfoot for I have a raging heart on and need a butthole. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing on this one. <laughs> what are you talking about? You better leave all this in. <laughs> <laughs> gotta leave all this in the i really fans will love it i need to sleep more god damn <laughs> i know i didn't sleep for shit last <laughs> me night. either and my brain is wonky yeah mine too plus i had two beers i got so the wonky I'm... i got the, I, had a, I had a milkshake son of a bitch i know there's Carmel. The 10 minutes i had ice cream earlier today it was so good for about 15 minutes <laughs> I melted some ice cream or some peanut butter, put that on the ice cream. Let River lick my uh my my fingers. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna get into this. All right, let's get into it. The important part of attempting to conjure up a spirit or demon with possible malicious intent 
is the rules. So we're going to get into the rules first. There's a lot of them. I put my own spin on them. Might I make an inquiry? No. Okay. Go ahead. Who, who made up the rules? Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, Kara. <laughs> All right. So, first off, don't taunt the fucking spirit. Chances are, whether it is malevolent or benevolent, it's not going to appreciate some random person shit talking or coaxing different conversation. Remember, you have something they likely miss and want. Life. Looking at you, dildo baggins. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a call out. This is. Oh, wait, it is a call out. I hate that guy. Yeah, we're going for a fight here. I can take him. <laughs> And I can record it. All right. He started it. <laughs> All right. Number two is shit. I'm kidding. Don't ask how or when you're going to die. Spirits don't have to tell the truth. And chances are you won't want or like the answer. So just don't do it. Three. Spirits can tell you whatever they want whether they just want to fuck with you or they have a more evil idea in mind, they can say they're a family member or a young child who tragically died, maybe to gain your trust or crush your beliefs or lack thereof. Take what they say as seriously as you take Nostradamus after 2012. That was <laughs> clever when I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, buddy. I got it. Thank you. As long as one person gets it, other than me, I'm happy. All right. Number four. And you're going to see why this is so important. Never use a Ouija board alone. First off, with more people comes more energy to communicate. Secondly, seriously, don't fucking do it. Safety in numbers. You're getting singled out if it does work. You're much more susceptible to being filled with lies that could mess you up a whole lot. If that doesn't convince you to uh, have a Ouija buddy, maybe the risk of being compromised by a demon will. That's right, sweetheart. Possession. Fucking buddy system. It's nine-tenths of the law, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Benjamin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm on some derail shit today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get into my happy pills? I promise I'll have something constructive to say later. <laughs> All right. Looking forward to it. Number five, and this one should be common sense, but don't use it at your house. Right. Use it at Jake's house. Use it at my house. <laughs> if you contact something evil, that energy is in your home and it's a shit show until that lingering contact is broken. It's basically got free range to fuck with you until it is gone. And let's be honest, if you're stupid enough to basically invite it into your house, you probably haven't done your homework on how to correctly get rid of the thing. That's not true. I've done all my homework. Benjamin, what? You are a whole different case here. I've been told that before. Yes. Different context. But I've been told that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> Take what, it from me. You're you're something special there. That's what my doctor said. <laughs> <laughs> Choose one person to lead the session. This is rule six, everyone. One person to ask the questions makes it less confusing and annoying for whatever you're trying to make contact with. I personally would be pretty pissed about four obnoxious kids shrieking personal questions. Imagine if you're supposed to be eternally at rest. That that's just like having an old lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they only want to bug you when you're at rest. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, keep your fingers on the planchette. And off the trigger. 
<laughs> You're pretty much playing with a portal linking the living with the dead. Your grubby digits are keeping the risk smaller. Take them off and you're asking for a paranormal shitstorm to start with you and your group in the epicenter. Number eight. Don't be a sarcastic douche. Fuck. Enough said. (laughs) (laughs) Number nine. When closing the session, do not leave the planchette on the board. Once again, paranormal shitstorm. It keeps the portal open and anything can come through. I might have should have had these rules years ago. Yeah. But like I said, you're something else. These ghosts are like, this guy is fucked up. I want to I wanna be away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. End the session by saying goodbye and moving the planchette over goodbye. It's respectful and it closes out this session and the portal. Number 11. Muy importante. If the spirit starts counting down or going through the alphabet in order, close the fucking session out with goodbye immediately. The fucker is trying to get out. Also, muy importante, if the spirit starts making the planchette move in a figure eight, close it down quickly. That bitch is also going for an escape, and it's the way that malevolent a way of malevolent spirits to reveal themselves. Right at this moment, I'm not sure whether I want you to have reasons these are the rules or not because I've experienced most of that playing with Ouija board. God, Benjamin. <sighs> Look, Bo, you know by now I just wing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Number 13. If the planchette hits Z and starts moving to to O, force the bitch to goodbye. Zozo is a demon and likes Ouija boards for some reason. There are stories of Zozo throwing shit around and trying to hit you with it, also making people very sick and also possessing people. Don't let that fucker communicate. Get rid of it ASAP. I'll stab him in the dick. With what? Zozo. More like our, our patented paranatural paranormal knife. Our paranatural dick stabber. <laughs> <laughs> the crotch slicer. <laughs> it's got a scope for Bigfoots because they got little ones, so you got to have good aim. <laughs> <laughs> Number 14. And this one is actually, I'm not making a joke out of this one. If you're depressed or in some morally compromised state of mind, don't use a Ouija board. It can make it easier for something malevolent to get a hold of you. So seriously, if you're depressed and you want to talk, talk to me. Not a spirit. Yep, I'm not going to joke about that one either. That one is dead nut serious. Yeah, so... Don't fuck around with the... paranormal shit. If you got some mental stuff going on, get your mental stuff taken care of. And story. Yeah, if if you got, you got our email, you got our Facebook group, you can find me with that. Email me. I'm sure Ben will hear from you. Yep. He's a for sure. So yeah, don't do it. And uh, number 15. Contrary to popular belief, do not burn the board. This keeps shit open. So bury the board and the planchette separately. That's bad for the environment. Burying it? Yeah, the planchette's made of plastic, bud. Eat it. <laughs> I shit on you, Zozo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll play with my my painful shit. <laughs> Man, those planchettes are quite big. I I feel like it would hurt to shit those out. They can be rather large. Yeah, I've made one and it's pretty big. It's a little floppy, but <laughs> now we're back to your only fans. <laughs> hey if it, if it's got some flop to it then it's got to have some size to it too all right so <laughs> back to the ouija if you're listening to the, the <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast you should know the movie the exorcist if not come on what are you doing <laughs> figured out <laughs> 
<laughs> in the movie weird shit starts happening to a little girl her mother takes her to damn near every doctor and psychologist in the state after a doctor tosses the idea of pe- demonic possession her mother sees the real accuracy of that statement the little girl speaks in a deep male voice hawks shit around without touching it levitates and yes cranks her head around 360 degrees yeah, the mother pea soup the whole time. Oh yeah, chunky and delicious, like a pea soup puking owl. Yeah, it's the funniest scene in movie history. <laughs> Yuck! The mother goes to a priest who is also a psychologist. He spends some time with the little girl and eventually concludes that the poor girl has been possessed. The church saw the evidence and thinks an exorcism is necessary. So two priests spend a lot of time trying to cast the demon out and shit seems to get worse. The ending is so unbelievable and I can't wait to tell you about it, but I'm not going to tell you here. Go watch it. So what if I told you this was based on a true story? What if I told you it all started with a Ouija board? Well, it is loosely based on a true story and began with the Ouija board. Very loosely. Don't you fret, my dears. I will share the true shit with you. So here is the true story of the exorcist from what I could find. The true exorcist story is based on an experience of Roland Doe. In March 1949, newspapers reported that a 14-year-old boy known as Robbie was possessed by something sinister and the priest performed an exorcism on him. Exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of syllables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. The boy was raised in a German Lutheran family and was no stranger to the paranormal. After asking for a Ouija board for his birthday, his Aunt Harriet gifted him one. Fuck Aunt Harriet. (laughs) Ah, no. (laughs) His aunt would use, and from a different website I saw, force him to use the board rather frequently. After she passed away, Robbie attempted to communicate with her through the board. He contacted something that wasn't his aunt, whether he knew it or not. Soon he began experiencing terrifying happenings around the house. The walls began to rattle. There were strange noises. The objects started flying across the room. With all this crazy stuff happening, the family also realized that Arabi was acting quite strangely. His family contacted every expert, all leading to a dead end. After getting no answers, the family finally received help from Father E. Albert Hughes, the family's local catholic priest an exorcism was performed in february 1949 the exorcism had to be stopped early though because robbie ripped out an entire mattress spring and threw it at the priest a few days later the boy started getting deep red scratches all over his body while being restrained to a bed Eventually, the family noticed the words Lewis carved into him. They took the odd advice and went to St. Louis University. That where... seems kind of like a leap, don't it? God damn. Could have been Louis, and they might have needed to take him to see Brad Pitt. How the <laughs> hell did they figure that one out? Or Louise and my old boss. Right. <laughs> Shit where they met Father Walter H. Holleron Holleron and Reverend William Bowdern. Any correction there, Toots? No, I, I don't know that. I think that's right, actually. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> Who performed an exorcism on young Robbie. According to William Blatty, who wrote the book and the script to the exorcist and also had access to a copy of one of the priest's journals, the low raspy voice in the movie actually happened. Levitation actually happened. Words appearing in the skin actually happened. Violent outbursts followed by objects flying across the room 
it happened. He stated that the head spinning was never denied. So, a few of those rules I mentioned before were broken, so just for safety's sake, follow the rules. Me. You mad at me? Actually, one of my favorite parts of the real exorcist story is Father Bowdern. Mm-hmm. He was a big dude. Yeah. Like, I've seen interviews with him. Like, he's your height, but built like me. Which, for because this is an audio podcast, Jake's 6'4", <laughs> and I'm wide as fuck. Okay, he was a big dude. And at one point during one of the exorcisms, he lays his body across, uh, I keep wanting to say Robbie, that's not his real name, though. Roland. Yeah, Roland. And the whole entire bed with a 14-year-old boy, a fucking linebacker, and the <laughs> whole ass bed just lifts up off the ground. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Don't they have a picture of that? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I thought they did. Maybe. Now, I didn't write this down because it's not scary, but just so you know, it does have a happy ending. Um Robbie cost an extra Roland. 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to the Patreon if you want to hear the happy ending. <laughs> F you guys. I'm kidding. I love you guys so much, and I will tell you here. Well, Ben's dying. Uh, I am dying. <laughs> um I'm joking on my own bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He used a Ouija board before this. That's not what's happening. Are you drinking water? Yeah. Fish fucking that. Not this bottle in particular. As far as you know. <laughs> Is it spring water? Purified? I don't know. It's fucking Walmart water. Yeah, it's purified with fishy <clears throat> sperms. Mm, okay. Salty. Am I going to ask how you know? Salty? yet satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Anyone else hear that? Okay. So, Robbie what i was reading um he changed his name and uh he actually helped with the moon landing um 1969 nasa he was a big part of nasa he worked there for over 40 years and he recently died in 2020 from old age so So, yeah the moral of the story is if you want to be really good at math get possessed by a demon No, it's got to be a special demon. Oh, right. A Ouija demon. A Ouija demon. So in the movie, they also said they didn't say whether or not this actually happened, but an X showed up in his skin to basically say that there were 10 demons in her. (laughs) But you know, so he might have had 10 demons, one of them a mathematician. Could have been. Could have. Okay, my next story. So here's where we get to hear me butcher some uh, some place in Mexico. Let's go. All right. In 2014, a crazy story hit mainstream news about three young teenagers who had gotten possessed after playing with a Ouija board in San Juan. Get there. Tlacatanco. Tlacatanco. I don't think that was it, but okay. (laughs) T-L-A-C-O-T-A-N-C-O. Tlacatanco. Okay. I'll I'll accept it. (laughs) Okay. Mexico. Three teenagers were in Mexico playing with what they thought would be a little fun game with a board that had been used by occult practitioners to contact spirits for over a century. Surprisingly, something went wrong. That was sarcasm, everyone. (laughs) Alexandra Huerta. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. You're getting better. Fell into a trance-like state and began convulsing. Her brother and cousin, who were also participating with the board, had bizarre symptoms as well, including numbness, 
double vision, blindness, deafness, hallucinations, spasms, and difficulty swallowing. The trio of teens were rushed to the hospital and officials refused to say one way or the other if the teens were victims of demonic possession. It was later stated that Alexandra wasn't playing a game, but trying to contact her deceased parents. The teens all turned out to be okay after a few days of observation. Okay, question. Answer. What kind of MRI detects demons? Uh, well, if you've watched The Possession, because we know every movie tells the truth, <laughs> you can see it in their lungs and heart. Duh. Oh, well, fuck, I might want to go get an MRI. Probably. <laughs> Mr. I don't close out Ouija boards in time. Or at all, probably. I just like to fight them when they get here. Another patented uh, paranatural weapon? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> How do you fight them? If you want to find that out, patreon.com slash paranatural podcast. <laughs> That's legit. I tell the story on there. Yeah, hmm. I like that story. All right. So my next story is pretty funny. Um, I'll be the and- judge of that. Okay. <laughs> so there wasn't a whole lot on this, but it's it's an amazing story that I had to write down anyways. Um <clears throat> I think it was in Texas in the 1980s. Um some strange happenings started happening ha- in a small town there. Was the um, town called Happening? Yeah. Okay. How'd you know? <laughs> so one night a police officer arrests a strange naked man running around the town and claiming that he was diseased with the living, if I remember correctly. And the next night, three more people were apprehended who were also naked shouting about demons and blah, blah, blah. And well, from here, shit spread like wildfire. Um, At the end of it, basically over 20 people were arrested for running around naked, including one police officer who ran butt ass naked into a bank claiming that he was on fire and with a little bit of research from outside help because they thought it was some sort of epidemic of getting naked and hallucinating or something. Man, um, it just sounds like a good time to me, but <laughs> yeah. Well, the FBI got involved <laughs> and figured out that eight, the original eight people who got arrested were playing with a Ouija board and challenging what spirit they had contacted and well the spirit said it was going to make itself known and Hmm. showed up for the party never Ouija with your pants off oh no that's the best way to Ouija that's the Uh, only way I Ouija uh, honestly though you know what that story sounds like to me you said it was the 80s in Texas no what? That town got a bad batch of the old Colombian marching powder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so this is a little video that I watched. Um, uh, where was it? Where was it? Columbia. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> 2016. <laughs> they still grow it today, Bobby. What? Yeah. Drugs are illegal, Ben. So nobody does them. Right. Okay. You're a so, correct thur. I'm so correct thur. Full correct thur. So about 20 students were using a Ouija board on a mobile phone app called 
call up spirits of the dead. Wait a minute. What? Keep, what, Tuts? Keep talking. Okay. So it shows these kids playing with it, and then they start acting very, very strangely. A lot of adults get in on it, and they call it a mass possession because the 20 were acting very strange roughly 20 my apologies and some were going into trances some were speaking in tongues um all in all it was a it was a weird video it's on daily mail if you want to watch it but all right go ahead what were you gonna say tits they got ouija board app they do install are you serious (laughs) <laughs> Benjamin. dude it won't install yeah there's a reason what the f oh there it goes <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> <clears throat> all right so next i'm gonna do a little reddit post Woo-hoo, reddit yeah i love reddit Reddit can be either a complete and total dumpster fire or the best place on the internet. Oh, I absolutely love it. Like, even if these stories aren't true, they're just magical. Like, some of Reddit is absolute gold. Other? <laughs> absolute shit. It's, it's like copper. But copper's still worth something. Much as gold. Okay. This one is called Don't Say We Didn't Warn You, it's called I don't I I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> Ouija's. Ouija. Oh yeah, I got a Ouija board app now. All right. Let Go me, ahead. You know what? Play with it. I'm gonna while I'm telling this. Okay. Any believers on in ghosts or the supernatural will tell you their golden rules. Don't play with the Ouija boards is the golden rule. Opening up a Ouija board, they say it's like opening up a portal to the other side. Sure, it could connect you with a deceased grandparent. But the heck is going on with my phone? But more likely than not, it's bound to invite an unwanted spirit into your midst. And once that connection is open, it may be very difficult to close no matter how much you like that pointer to land on goodbye. That's one theory anyway. The more scientific explanation of how a Ouija board really works is the resulting creepy Ouija board stories is a psychological concept called the ideomotor effect. This is a studied phenomenon in where in which your body is said to move accordingly to your subconscious will. So yes, while your big sister may intentionally be messing with you, there is also a possibility that she is actually guiding the tear not a tear shape goodness gracious without yeah it is it's not a tear shape mine's a heart shape a planchette yeah i can grab it right now it's like 10 feet from me if you it's a heart shape i mean i guess kind of but it's it's also teardrop shaped sort of (laughs) my tears come out as stars (laughs) river what are you doing okay whichever notion Um, you what my phone Ouija board? Yeah. Just spelled out, make it stop. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. What a dick. <laughs> okay. We're going to get to an actual story. Justin played with a Ouija board one day with several of his friends. They asked questions, but instead the planchette moved to certain letters. It began to move in a strange pattern. It went to all four corners of the board and made an X. The 32-year-old New Jersey resident tells Reader's Digest, then it just went in circles. The next time he used the board, it was at a different friend's house. Again, the planchette moved in the same strange pattern. I felt like there was some kind of hex, he continues. Later that night, when he was sleeping, he felt a forceful hand grab his arm and wake him up. Everyone else in the house was sound asleep. I read this one earlier. It was a little creepy. Abby was in her room one night after playing with a Ouija board earlier that day. As she was getting ready for bed, her computer screen changed from black to blue. It turned itself on. 
She turned the computer off again. The computer clicked itself back to life. Anxious, Abby unplugged the computer completely. And then the unpowered computer starts back up. She buried the Ouija board in her backyard that same night. If you don't particularly blah, 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 blah. So at the end of these, it gives you like a safe alternative to different stories that aren't so scary. How's your Ouija board app? Is it like um, these stories? No. What it said. When you started reading the first one? Yeah. It spelled out no way. Yes way. And Ben just said goodbye. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk to it? Nope, sure don't. <laughs> what? Come on, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Are you scared? Because, I mean, if you are, we're not on scare tactics, Tracy Morgan. There were some parts of that show where I don't know why they didn't just whip on the scary guy's ass. Yeah, I just, why didn't, why do you think I didn't sleep last night? I benched that entire show. I mean, it was an entertaining as shit show. I loved it. But yeah, you're right. If, if, some lady pooped out a mutant baby quote unquote i would kick that little fucker across the room i'm punting them both right <laughs> right just... or like an alien coming in with just really long fingers i'm gonna hoof it in the nuts and hope that works and i mean like that flannel wearing large marge bitch yeah like she i mean would be sort of intimidating but I would, I'd fight her. Hoof her in the front butt, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, shouldn't be mean. She's probably a real nice lady. Oh, I bet she's wonderful. She's probably awesome. But Yeah. Okay. Most people play with a Ouija board in groups or at least with one other person. But uh, that name, Asiana, wanted to try to use it on her own. She put her hands on the pointer and asked questions, but nothing happened. She took her hands off the pointer and was about to put the game away when the planchette began to move around on its own. I'll never try that again, says the 30-year-old from New Jersey. What a story. (laughs) All right, I got time for this one. When Vince, now 30, was a child, one of his friends goaded him into playing with a Ouija board in his basement. Young Vince didn't expect anything to happen out of the ordinary, so he went along with it. Once they started to play, however, the lights began to flicker. The air around them grew cold, and a spirit began to communicate with them through the board. The spirit spelled out a Russian name and claimed he had been murdered. We took a break to make pizza rolls, Vince says. But we forgot to close <laughs> up. <laughs> They're smoking weed in that basement. Because that is what you need to do when there's ghosts running around. You'd be like, oh, wait, ghost, this is time out. We need some pizza rolls. Yo. <laughs> when do you not need pizza rolls? <laughs> like, whoa, you guys going to have to stop being spooky for a minute. I got to heat up this Totino's, okay? Yeah, Vince, I'm giving you a shout out. You're, you're a real fucking boss. <laughs> I ain't got time for ghostesses right now. I got the munchies. But we forgot to close out the circle when we were done. If you're new into Ouija stories, that's a big no-no. After returning to the basement, the energy was much heavier. The books and things were sprawled all around the floor, and yet the board had remained perfectly still in the center of the room, just how they had left it. Upon looking in the mirror that we had nearby the eye of the ouija board was moving sporadically in its own reflection how does that make sense vince look the important part of that story is the pizza rolls were fine pizza rolls baby (laughs) i wish i had pizza rolls i probably do yeah wonder if they use a microwave or an oven i'm gonna guess a microwave bro vince just sounds like that kind of guy yeah, but oven's the best. <laughs> you get that little air fryer. Yeah, well, Ooh. I don't have an air fryer. I have an oven that sometimes likes to work. Well, sometimes that's handy. 
So am I. Wink. <laughs> and back to OnlyFans. This one is called My First Mistake Was Insulting It. My friend had mentioned that she had one, so I asked her to pull out the board. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> So I could check it out. <laughs> At first, she said no, but then agreed to do it as long as she didn't have to participate. After what? <laughs> Benjamin, you're throwing off my groove. You want to get thrown off a bridge? Yes. Have you seen the emperor's new groove? Yes. Yeah. You know how this is going to go. You don't We're throw off my groove. We're going over a waterfall. Yeah. Sharp on your rocks at the bottom. <laughs> okay after she had set the board up i asked is there anyone in here nothing so being a dumb teenager i said if anything's in here with us and not talking you're a bitch it says coward but bitch sounds better <laughs> the board was put away after that <clears throat> fast forward a week later and having me sleep upstairs on the couch I wake up to the stereotypical stormy night, thunder and lightning, wind and rain, the works. I look around to see why I woke up and couldn't see a thing. I decided to try fall back asleep. After laying there for about 30 seconds, I hear from downstairs, get the boy. Oh, here, I'm going to try it how he describes it. Get the boy. In a very raspy, wispy voice. <clears throat> I open my eyes. Pull down my pants um, and listen. <laughs> Nothing. Start to go back to sleep. Get the boy. It was much louder. Then my downstairs door slams. I freak the fuck out because nobody slept down there and we had no drafts. That was a good story. But they didn't get him? They didn't get the boy. They were demons are fucking incompetent. I mean, there's not a part two. They might have. <laughs> well, OK, good point. <clears throat> All right. This one's called is spoken Latin. During the board with six or seven people, one of my. F only one of my friends knows Latin and he's not touching the Oracle. What? The con yeah, yeah, it's confusing me, too. The contact starts speaking to us in Latin. This same friend later pulls his hands back from the Oracle, having received what looks like a small scratch on his wrist. I thought he wasn't touching it. Yeah. So this story's I. bullshit. Boo. 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 His boo. boo. If you're going to lie, at least be a good writer. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Continuity, people. It's important. <laughs> All right. This one's called the creepy doll. I have a terrifying story about an Ouija board. And, I hate that. An Ouija, Ouija board, board starts and with an O. <laughs> with an Ouija board. <laughs> I got a call from my cousin who said that he, his brother, his dad, and his best friend were using an Ouija board in their <laughs> basement. <laughs> Prior to starting, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creepy and placed it in an adjacent room face down on a pile of towels. My cousin took a short break because the board was spouting nonsense and he went to take a shit. His dad and brother and friend started asking the board questions without him. One of the questions was, who is in the other room? It just started spouting random numbers. And when my cousin came back into the room, his brother said that it wasn't working and they were going to put it away. And he showed him the answer to the last question and asked, he asked, and he said, dude, that's my social security number, social security number. <laughs> then they started to talk to whatever was spewing answers out. It told my cousin he would die in the Air Force. At this point, they tell the entity they are communicating with to prove itself. It then spelled out the doll, the word doll, and they were like, what the fuck? They opened up the door to check on the porcelain doll. 
They had laid in the other room, and when they opened the door, the doll was standing up right in front of the door, staring at everyone. Everyone freaked out and ran out of the house. His best friend burned the Ouija board, and I think temporarily went nuts, nuts for a few months. My cousin, for some reason, joined the Air Force and is now based in Europe. But he's not dead? Not yet. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Now, I can tell these stories all day because there's a million stupid people. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm stupid and have done Ouija boards. So, the first time I did it, this is also one of the rules, but it's a stupid rule. Don't do the Ouija board where something bad has happened that you know of. And they say don't do it in cemeteries, but that's just stupid. That's where dead bodies are brought. That's not where people die. That's not where bad things happen. That's just where people are buried. Now, mine was actually at one of the episodes that I've done. It was at the, the Traverse City State Hospital. Um, I did it with my friend Gage, who, have I, who I've mentioned a few times in this podcast, and well that was my first time with a ouija board nothing really happened except for a candle went out we were in the car so it was a little bit weird but it's not scary um the second time i used a ouija board was on an abandoned train and this is where shit got real we were on an abandoned train it was probably like one in the morning and uh we start by asking is anyone there and one big thing about this guys is if you're gonna do it be patient sometimes it just wants to take a second to answer so don't like is anyone there why aren't you there blah 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 blah. the spirits do not exist to do tricks for you right just for me so so after a while it moves to yes and we ask what's your name gives us the initials njs at least i hope it's initials because i don't think i could pronounce that name ninjas (laughs) um maybe it's spanish it's (laughs) another thing that i've come across that some people call a rule is don't ask the spirit how it died it could trigger it to be pissed and like bring up bad memories um so after a while my friend did the dumb thing and asked how it died to which it responds high five h i five and that confused me because not many people have died from a high five. Um, How hard are you high five? And Jesus, <laughs> right? So, um, it was the first time I'd been on that train, and I've been around it a lot. So, fast forward, we close out the session. Nothing really creepy happened. It, it was answering, and that creeped me out a little bit, but it was more fascinating than anything. So, fast forward to the morning, me and my friend went to check out the train, and we're walking on the outside of it. We come across the cart that has high five graffitied on the side. So we're like, no way go in there. And the entirety of the inside of that cart was burnt. Like there was nothing left and it was burnt. So maybe it died in a fire. Maybe it died in that cart in a fire, but it was pretty cool. Um, The third time I used a Ouija board was on that train again. It was because he didn't learn his lesson the first fucking time. It didn't scare me the first time. Oh, this time it scared the fuck out of me. (laughs) Um, I was on it with my friend again, but the first time there was three of us. This time there was two of us. It was in the fall, so it was pretty cold. Northern Michigan, but it wasn't cold enough to like see your breath yet um so we're talking and 
it would move it just a little bit, but it wouldn't like go to any letters. It would just move it a little bit. So after a while, like shit just starts to feel off. It gets real cold and we were blaming it on Northern Michigan. Like temperature fluctuates like no other up there. Um, but it gets really, really cold. We were wearing gloves and the finger still went numb. And after a while, I look up and saw like a shadow moving in the candlelights. Um, so I didn't want to say anything and creep my friend out. And I look back down at the board, like trying to keep an eye on both of them look up again i see a face like right by your shoulder this was the part when he knew he fucked up <laughs> that is the part where i said it's time to say goodbye <laughs> and she was like are you sure i said yep time to say goodbye move the planchette to goodbye close it out and we start walking and she's like what's wrong i was like i'm not gonna tell you right now got back to the house and she asked what was wrong. I said, I think I saw something. I told her everything. And she was like, I felt really, I felt something right there. So she shows me her right shoulder and there's like some scratch marks and like a red. It was pretty weird. Um, you said, yeah, uh, no big deal. But hey, for a minute there, you had two heads. Yeah, you had a fucking <laughs> face jutting out of you. So, and one of them was a shadow. Yeah. No big deal. Right, now, I'm very curious. Can I hear some of your experiences? With a Ouija board? Yes. I don't have any that are interesting, honestly. You said that you've had them go in circles. You Well, yeah, I mean, but other than that, like, I can't tell you specific times is when we were fucking around with them. They've done it. Nothing happened after that. The only, so the only time I can really like recall anything happening in conjunction with a figure eight was that at, while it was happening, I had my deck of tarot cards were sitting on a shelf, like across the room while it was moving, they scattered across the floor and that was it. That's, that's. there any certain one that was up or no they were all mixed up and down and well that's all i got on on the ouija's here's my question oh god there are a there are quite a few ways with which one may communicate with the spirit world Let's see why is Ouija the evil one? So, you're going to love this, but the reason that people see it as evil is because of the exorcist story. Yeah, I know. It's pop culture. And why in the flying Fs did you ask it? Just so that we could state that outright. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's evil because... Like, let's be honest, everyone. If you're communicating with the spirit, spirits or whatever, there's always a chance you're going to get bad. You are opening the door. Yes. Pandora's fly, if you will. And there can be shit that's benevolent. There can be shit that's malevolent. Mm -hmm. So just be smart if you're doing this. Correct. That is the point I was trying to get to. Yes. Ouija is no more it's it's no more useful, no more evil, no more anything than any other method of spirit communication or divination that you can practice. No matter what you do, you're opening the damn door. Yeah, I think I think Ouija is just like one of the main go to's because it is a very easy way to start. It's it's extraordinarily accessible. Yes. And I mean, come on, you got to be 21 to buy a beer, but only eight to summon a demon. <laughs> With the help of a board. With the help of a board. Go Hasbro. 
you know while we're on the subject of children's toys and demons and stuff Mm -hmm. did you know it's also possible to communicate through the game simon no i didn't know that one yeah uh you choose a color for yes you choose a color for no and you choose a color for something else that makes sense but it will light up the colors Hmm. nifty yeah i've watched a few videos on that and i i've always wanted to try it but then i get too hooked in the game of simon gotta go to walmart brb (laughs) yeah (laughs) well i start and i'm like okay is there hot blue blue yellow yeah pop it oh sorry (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah if it starts communicating Spirit, what should I do with my life? <laughs> Twist Flick it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Yank it. And this is the kind of stuff that you don't say with a Ouija board. Sarcastic shit like this. But we're funny, so. <laughs> <laughs> we challenge the demons so you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, ben watches the boring shit so you don't have to Thank we do you. the research so you get the golden stuff that's right we weed her out for you kids <laughs> um but yeah so nothing is harmless keep that in mind listeners i can't really dispute that point actually you can commute through a corn dog. Hmm, psychic corn dogs. <laughs> Shark tail. I'm not to know if I <laughs> How many times have you watched that movie lately? So many. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> but yeah, there's also been uh like movies will turn on by themselves like Disney movies that'll turn on by themselves when when people are like trying to communicate through a mirror or like seance. I mean, dude, I got electronics that turn themselves on and off all the time around here and I'm not communicating with shit, but my pillow. Yeah, my TV's turned on twice since we've been doing this podcast. It does it every time we record. Yes, it does. Like, like... We'll sit down, <laughs> we'll start talking and it turns on. Every single time. Yeah. It's like just letting me know it's staying tuned. Mm-hmm. You got the free show, buddy. Yeah. It's our, our biggest fan. Yeah. Well, something happened earlier. I started making my mac and cheese. And uh, for some reason, my brother has beers up on the fridge. <laughs> like very, very on the fridge. Mm-hmm. One of them falls off the fridge, lands on the counter, like right by my finger. <laughs> like, dude, shaking up. No one's going to drink it now. I mean, look. The ghost was just tossing you a brewski. It's not his fault. You're a shitty catch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm quite the catch. I just suck at catching. <laughs> to clarify to all my viewers out there, he, I am a catch. He's single ladies, paranatural podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Get at me. <laughs> <laughs> My stage name, of course, we've discussed this. It's the mountain man. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, you're you're I'm like smoothie. pretty boy. Yeah, nope, smoothie. smoothie. Smoothie and I am the mountain man. <laughs> All right, I think this show has been derailed plenty enough. So Jacob, unless you have anything left to say to the people. Uh be safe with Ouija boards. They're fun, but be safe. Listen to the rules. Be safe Whatever. anytime you attempt to communicate with the other side. Yeah, but I was only talking about Ouija boards today, so that's what I'm telling you. It's to be dark safe there. It's scary there. And with that, I'll say good night. Good night.